numpy part here we conclude the numpy part here let's move on towards uh, let's move on towards the second part of today which is pandas okay and we are looking at visualization simultaneously so that's not an issue in the interest of time the second topic is pandas the excel of python It's as if you are uh, dealing with tabular stuff, just like you do in Excel. You can do that in pandas as well. Okay. Just like we imported NumPy, we need to import pandas as well. The standard convention is to import it as PD. Okay. So we have imported pandas as PD. All right. And just let's start with creating a dictionary because uh, we looked at one example in the last uh, sessions and uh, we can convert a dictionary to a pandas data frame okay so just like this the premium product for numpy was a numpy array the premium product for premium product for pandas is pandas data frame it's nothing but a table that you can work work, work with in python Everything that you do in Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, you can do that in Pandas as well. If you want to do a pivot table, there are ways to do that uh, using a group by or things. If you want to do an aggregation, you can do that. If you want to visualize things, you can do that. We've already seen a bit of that. So you can do a lot of things in uh, a lot of things in Pandas. Okay. So let's create a random data set. Okay. My reservoir data poros porosities let's say porosities are np dot random dot randint np dot random dot randint uh and let's say the starting range is let's say uh five or let's say seven percent porosity the ending range is let's say uh 35 percent porosity and the size is let's say 100 so this will give us give us a hundred elements of porosity. Now we can generate permeabilities as well. And let's set up some, uh, you know, let's set up some. Let's create only one element for now. Okay. So this is a my reservoir data, which is a dictionary with porosity values. And let's convert that to a data frame. The way to do that is PD dot data frame is a function. And we pass the my reservoir data. Inside this and you can see we have all the porosity values. We can store that as DF reservoir. And if you see DF reservoir, this is the DF reservoir. Okay, now we can create a permeability column like this. Just like we could create a new key in a dictionary, we can create a permeability column like this. And I'm setting up a rule like, hey, permeability is like porosity multiplied by 120, let's say. That's a simple rule I'm creating. Okay. Or maybe let's say porosity to the power 2, 2.15, 1, 2, whatever. That's a random rule that I've created. Okay. So now if I look at DF reservoir, so you can see I, I have a porosity value and I have a permeability value as well. Now I can visualize it PLT dot plot. On the X axis, I will have porosities. On the Y axis, I will have permeabilities. Okay, and because the order is not sorted every you are seeing these jiggly lines. So let's do the scatter plot. So you can see porosity permeability is increasing with an incre increment in porosity. Normally this data will be available to you from some data collection source. So you will not create this, but this is just our simulation of some random data set. And you can visualize what kind of relationship your porosity permeability values are following. Okay, what if now what if you ask me, can I uh, do the logarithm of permeability and plot it like a semi log plot? Uh, against porosity yes you can do that so you can repeat this plt dot scatter you can repeat that and you can do the np dot log on the permeability column and then plot it so you can see now it is 
it has changed its ways okay so so that's a bit about uh, you know uh, that's a bit about uh, porosities and permeabilities data frame now what else we can do in in a pandas data frame we can create a pandas data frame using a numpy array if you have a two dimensional array what if you wanted to store that in a structured format you have a column header for every every column of the array or a matrix and you have the row index for example and you want to store that in in the format of a uh, numpy uh, of a data frame so how can we do that so you cannot create a data frame from multiple three dimensional matrix okay so it's only limited to a two dimensional matrix so suppose we have this data suppose we have this data okay suppose we have this data and suppose uh, the data is such that the column headers this column this column this column this column so the column headers are this column titles are w x because there are four columns i know the column headers to be w x y z okay and i know the row row titles as well and i call them row titles and they are a b c and d and e because there are five rows okay so we have column titles and we have row titles so the good thing about the pd dot data frame function is that it allows me to provide these details okay so i can provide the data equals to data what else can i, uh, can I provide let's check the documentation you can provide the index which is the row titles and columns which is the column titles so index equals to row titles and columns equals to column titles and you can see you have created a data frame okay so this can be your data frame of data and you can look at df data now you can also take the transpose you can also take the transpose of this data set changing the rows to columns columns to rows in arrays it does not get that visibility but if you do that dot t here you can see a b c d e come to the top and w x y z they come to the bottom so that's all about transposing a data the uh, data frame sometimes you might need to do that okay now one thing that you can do directly is suppose all of them were different kind of things suppose this was oil production rate this was water production rate this was water injection rate this was gas injection rate whatever was carried out in your oil production field you might want to have a quick visualization of things so you can use df dot df data dot plot as simple as that you can provide a figure size fixed size size equals to let's say 12 comma 4 you run it you can see you have a quick visualizations of various things okay right now on the on the on the vertical axis we have a b c d e for example they can be time stamps as well that this is my today's date this is my tomorrow's date and so on so on the x axis you can have uh, various days let's let's try to create it like that okay let's try to create it so uh, suppose my row row uh, day 1 and this is day 2 this is day 3 this is day 4 this is day 5 okay day 2 day 3 day 4 and day 5 and i run it and i run it now it gets more intuitive now you understand it what can be the application of having a row index or a row title and now if i plot it you can see it's as if the various parameters are changing trends you can see you can drive some conclusion that hey the blue plot has uh, declined after the day 3 something went wrong in the in this particular parameter you can go and check the sensor from whatever this parameter is recorded so just brainstorming out loud 
what can be the various kind of applications of this okay so there is a very popular wall field data set which has a time stamps on the row axis so you can fetch that in and you can you know work with that and do the same plotting on that as well okay so now let's look at a very common fundamental accessing the rows accessing subset of data set i lock and lock okay what if you wanted to pick out let's say only three columns so we have df data what if you wanted to fetch only w and x the way to do that is very easy we have to provide df data and create this square bracket and within the square bracket provide a list of columns that you want to subset so i want to provide w and x for example and you can see only two rows two columns are accessed if i provide just w it will have this the reason we have two square brackets is because the internal square bracket is supposed to be the list of columns that you want to fetch i can provide a z as well okay so this is just a way to fetch out the columns okay what if you wanted to pick out the first two columns and the first two rows so basically you want to fetch out this much data uh, uh 0.73 0.08 2.79 0.24 so the way to do that is df dot i lock df dot i lock row let's provide it like this row initial up to row final row final will not be included just like common indexing this for this is for rows comma column initial up to column final okay so df data like i told you we need the first two rows which means zero row and the first row and the first two columns which is the zero row zero uh, column and the first column so i can use the dot i lock i is for uh, accessing via indexes we can also access via labels which will be dot lock so 0 to 2 and 0 to 2 you can see the first two rows and the first two columns are accessed similar thing can be done using dot lock okay so df dot lock follows the same strategy just that you provide uh, labels rather than providing numeric indexes so you can provide df data dot lock starting at a or starting at day 1 ending at let's say day 2 in this case both the index both the labels will be included so there is no there is no issue in this case starting at w ending at x so you can see it does the same thing as this thing so if you understand these two things you have understood how to access the sub parts of your data set okay now finally let's look at how to import importing data using pandas now suppose we have a df data that we had right i can store that in in my local folder using two csv and i can provide my wx yz data dot csv okay now before i run that i will show you the folder so this is my folder you can see there are three three notebooks and this script nothing else but once i run this once i run this now you can see there is a csv file now in my source folder okay so now what if i wanted to import it again so i know the file path right this is my file path so i can import it like pd dot read csv because i am reading a csv format i can provide the same thing and you can see this is it and basically every time you store data the index column is also stored as a separate column so when you import it you have to be very cautious of that and you can provide this index column equals to 0 so that this again is recovered in the format it was saved in okay so this is about uh, and i can call that as df imported 
okay and you can do various things you can checking the uh, analyzing the data sets you can do df data dot info it tells you the number of rows the number of the kind of data every column has uh, and everything else about the data set you can check a df dot describe which will give you the descriptive statistics about the data df dot describe you can see every column it gives you few informations that w column has a standard deviation of this much minimum of this much these percentiles the maximum of this much and so on so this was about the descriptive statistics of the data set and i mean you can keep on going as long as you want so this was about pandas okay now finally let's look at a bit about visualizations as well we've already looked at visualizations but let's look at visualizations okay there are two libraries we will look at import pandas as pd uh, sorry import matplotlib we have already done that but let's do that again matplotlib dot pyplot as plt import tbond as sns so you have two libraries they can help you do the same thing okay so let's use the df data only okay so what if i wanted to do the line plot line plot in matplotlib it is just simple plt dot plot df data w for example on the x axis i want this and on the y axis uh i want z so you can see this is the way to create a line plot okay and the same thing you can do that in cborn as sns dot line plot the good thing here is you need to provide x axis label y axis label and the data set the data equals to df data you can run it you can see the same plot is again drawn okay why is it uh, looking different as compared to this i have no clue but ideally they should be very similar okay to draw, draw a scatter plot scatter plot in matplotlib plt dot scatter df data x df data y scatter plot draws a few dots like you can see and you can draw on the same plot you can, if you draw a line you will see the entire trend plt dot plot color you can provide a color to be let's say red you can see this is the it's like a constellation okay so you have a scatter plot uh, in cborn you can do the same thing sns dot scatter plot and you can provide this th same thing x equals to x y equals to y data equals to df data so you can see it's the same plot okay what if you wanted to do the histogram okay plt dot hist remember histogram is for continuous data points and uh, this is a uh, 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 sorry histogram is for continuous data points and bar plot is for discrete data points so on the x axis if you have a continuous data point it will be a histogram if you have a, a discrete variable and you want to see uh, the the magnitude of various things for every discrete variable that will be a bar plot and i will demonstrate just that okay so df data data dot for example this is a histogram okay so you can see continuous axis is there this is a histogram in cborn sns dot hist plot x equals to x and data equals to df data 
So you can see this is a better looking histogram. Whenever it gets to statistical plotting, Seaborn looks better. Okay. What if you wanted to look at, uh, let's say, what if you wanted to look at, let's say, bar plot? In bar plot, the x axis is always one axis is categorical. For example, in the DF data, DF data, you can do a dot plot kind equals to bar. And you can see for all the days you are seeing the values of various, it's like a comparison over multiple days of some parameters. You can assume them to be a lab reading on every day and you can see the comparative reading that, hey, uh, the W minus the Z at day one was this and on day two, the W spiked a huge lot and I can draw some inference from that. So this is the simplest way to do a bar plot, but if you wanted to use a matplotlib plt.bar, I can provide df. Uh, I can provide df dot index on the x axis, df data dot index. And on the y axis, I can provide df data dot let's say w. So you can see for all the days I'm seeing a bar plot of w's. I can repeat this for let's say uh, w x. You can see it's 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 called a stacked bar plot. And I can repeat this for let's say w x y. You can see now we have three stacks and we have Z. So basically we are displaying the same information as we are displayed here, but in this it's a stack. Uh, otherwise you can you can choose whatever way you want to visualize, whatever gives you more conclusions. Okay. And you can do the same thing in SNS dot bar plot. And you need to provide X axis and you need to provide uh, y axis and you need to provide the data. Okay. X axis is basically, let's say, uh, uh, in this case, I will have to use df data dot index. And on the y axis, I'm not sure if it will work, but let's try. Data equals to df data. You can see it did work, which is a good thing. And again, Seaborn makes things look better. You can see automatically based on the magnitude it has provided colors. So which is a good thing. So this is all about it. I think uh, I think we can uh, ignore Plotly for now because I realize that Plotly needs external installation for most computers. By default, it does not come with the Seaborn uh, with the Jupyter package. So uh, you don't have to worry about Plotly for now. If in case you want to have a look at it, you can go to the Again, petroleum from scratch YouTube channel. I have a plotly playlist there as well. So it's 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 secondary. At least knowing one visualization tool really well helps your case. Uh, for example, for a long time in my uh, my journey in data science, I I did not know much about Seaborn. So I carried my entire thing uh, using matplotlib. And as you have seen in the last 15 minutes, everything that you can do in matplotlib, you can do in Seaborn as well. So that's not an issue. So I think that's all about it. Uh, let's open the floor for discussions and questions. Uh, this is it about session three. Any doubts, anyone?
no doubts it looks like there are no doubts uh, i hope everyone could at least get a feel of uh, you know these three tools uh, these three uh, you know horizons if i may of data analysis i will upload this uh, notebook in the same folder where i have been uploading the codes so you can access that after the session have a look at it so that we can be uh, doing some projects uh, in the later session don't worry if you strike when i'm dealing with a project and if you don't understand what i'm doing and uh, uh, just feel free to you know ask me or google it up google it up it will be a it will be the case that you can never complete a particular package throughout so it always happens that you learn uh, as you practice so having a context is good enough and i hope this session provided a good context for whoever who did not know about numpy pandas and uh, uh, matplotlib seaborn so these are the data analysis and manipulation tools in python and they they have a lot of powers you can do a lot of things with them so going going over to their documentation website it may help you a lot and uh, keep it recursive i mean don't try to complete it it's not a book but as you do more and more projects you will get to understand more and more ways to visualize things for example matplotlib can be used to visualize 3d plots as well so there are documentations provided on that all right so i think we should wrap this session up and i will upload this notebook and see you in the final session in a couple of hours all right so all right thank you everyone okay everyone let's meet at 5 pm